What's up everyone, it's Jossie here, and today I'm gonna to be reviewing the iPhone 16 Pro Max with 256 gigabytes of storage in the natural titanium colorway. And before we continue today's video, I noticed that 85% of you all are not subscribed. And it would be amazing if you all could subscribe to the channel. We're so close to 200K subscribers, and I plan on doing some really fun giveaways as we get closer to the end of the year, which do require you to be a subscriber. Why not consider subscribing? Because we have one of the dopest communities on YouTube. So I've been using the iPhone 16 Pro Max in the natural titanium color for about a month now. And I also gained access to Apple Intelligence about a week ago. So I'll be discussing some of my initial impressions regarding Apple Intelligence, plus my review of using the iPhone 16 Pro Max as my daily driver. For this review, I'm gonna discuss what I like the most, what I've used the most for this phone, some things I don't particularly care for or understand, I like camera control outside of opening the camera. I wanna make sure this review is as real as possible without me yapping about things I actually don't use or really notice. Starting with the design and build, the iPhone 16 Pro Max looks so good. It really is identical to the 15 Pro Max, which was also a beautiful phone. But I thought I would go with the rose gold color and make a more interesting choice, but there's something about this natural titanium that was calling my name. Maybe I'm just a sucker for silver because I also have a silver Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, and you can see these phones side by side. They both look so clean. But enough about the S24 Ultra. This is the iPhone video. The display is a 6.9 inch XDR Retina display compared to the 6.7 inch XDR retina display from the 15 Pro Max. Can't imagine myself going to just a pro model after using the 16 Pro Max. I've gotten used to the size. I don't have the largest hands in the world. The phone fits in my hand pretty good, but with all my travel and consuming a ton of content on this phone, I just couldn't imagine going back to that smaller device. In terms of brightness, I didn't notice if it was too dim when in direct sunlight, but there is a noticeable difference between how bright this phone is versus the Pixel 9 Pro XL and the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. I've mostly been using this case from Peak Design. The main reason is because this case has a mount for my bike. So that way I can actually look at my navigation without guessing or looking at my Apple Watch, which is a lot less safe than simply looking at my phone, which sits in the middle of my handlebars. I love how this phone feels and how it fits in hand. I actually don't mind the more muted and matte edges, making the phone look and feel more understated and bespoke. Due to the larger battery and upgraded camera components, the 16 Pro Max actually weighs a little bit more than the 15 Pro Max, but the phone is still incredibly light. I've held it during some of my runs outside. The phone is almost unnoticeable when I'm holding it in hand, even for a longer period of time. Outside of Apple intelligence, of course, I think the most exciting thing about this phone is the camera. Find that the details in the wider angle camera with the larger sensor does let in more light. It performs well enough in low light settings that I rarely find that the footage or the pictures aren't usable for posting on social media. The new Fusion main camera is just chef's kiss. I love how consistent the picture quality is when using the 48 megapixel main camera. And for reference, in my camera settings, I do have Pro Raw Max toggled on, which gives my pictures more details with a higher resolution. This is due to the fact that the pictures contain more pixels, containing a more highly detailed image. You're gonna have larger picture files, so keep that in mind. There is a new 5X telephoto optical zoom that's so clean, and I find that I use it for when I wanna capture details of landscapes. Like when my wife and I went upstate, I wanted to get the details of the mountains, or when I see a building when walking around New York City that catches my eye, because I'm a bit of an architecture nerd. When comparing in my home office, just simply taking a picture of this plant behind me, I did notice that the 2X zoom brought in more light and was less pixelated than the 5X zoom. Moving on to camera control, now at first I really did not use this button at all. I think the placement is awkward and struggle to interact with the control because I have to bend my thumb in this awkward way, making it difficult to control how much pressure I use to tap the control. However, after a month of usage, 
I noticed that I really do enjoy using the camera control when I simply want to open up the camera and capture a picture of something like really quickly, like I don't have a ton of time. I find it easy for me to just slide my thumb down and simply open up the camera app and use the camera control button to start a video or to take a picture. I thought that I would use camera control more when it comes to a shooting landscape and that it would feel more natural, but it still isn't because my pointing finger is just a bit too short to naturally swipe through the controls. Now my favorite feature is the new photograph style settings, offering a more deeper customization so you can perfect the look and feel of your photo right in the Photos app. As a black person, I greatly appreciate this feature. Sometimes photos cannot look as natural as you like with a darker skin tone, but luckily with this feature, it allows you to perfect the tone of the picture using this D-pad. Now to take this a step further, you can go into the camera settings and actually set a default photographic style for all of your pictures. You simply select four of your favorite photos of yourself or whatever you typically take pictures of. Then you can swipe through the different styles. My favorite right now is rose gold, which I was not expecting, but it's a great photographic style for fall. Then you can customize the tone and color. After that, you can save the style. And now when you take your pictures, they will be saved with that style, or I like to think of it, that picture profile. Now that we've discussed the minimal changes to the design of the 16 Pro Max and the upgraded camera controls, let's discuss Apple intelligence. Starting off with Siri's glowing upgrade. By simply pressing on the side button, Siri will prompt with a new glow feature that is a nice subtle visual effect for an interaction with Siri. I appreciate the visual cue that Siri is listening and that it's not just a nice visual animation, but can be helpful when you're in noisier environments and need feedback to know if Siri is listening. I've used the conversational experience more often because it's a great way to perform actions without the need to open an app or even unlock my iPhone 16 Pro Max like when setting reminders or timers. For the ChatGBT integration experience, double tap the bottom of your phone. While this feature opens a ChatGBT integration, I found myself using this experience less than expected due to inconsistent responses and the frequent, sorry, I don't understand, toast message replies from Siri, which is more likely due to iPhone's ChatGBT integration being an on-device versus in the cloud, like the ChatGPT application, where all your interactions are processed on OpenAI's servers. Jumping into the camera AI feature cleanup, which allows you to erase any unwanted objects in your photographs. When comparing it to the Pixel 9 Pro Excel's eraser tool, for example, not only does it give you a glowing animation for objects it recommends for you to erase, staying on theme with the glowing Apple intelligence, but it also worked a lot faster than the Pixel's eraser and did just as good of a job erasing the object. I've used summaries for longer text messages, group chats. It just is a nice way to save time instead of going back and reading through old messages to build context around what everyone's talking about. Now, it doesn't do a perfect job. For example, I'm in this really big group chat with a ton of my cousins, and the summary stated that we're planning a trip to Kenya and considering Johannesburg as a potential destination, which clearly Johannesburg is not in Kenya. It's in South Africa. Summaries can also be a great way to get a high-level overview of notifications per application. Like for example, I'm in way too many fantasy leagues, and it's nice to be able to see a summary of my fantasy league notification for the sleep app because I have three to four leagues in just that app alone. When Apple introduced the writing tools, I kind of just glossed over them and really didn't care too much because I've been using writing tools with Gemini and Gmail and Notion for a while. However, the writing tools integration in the notes app has been great to use. Like when I was in Palo Alto last week, there was a ton of information that I needed to gather in a short amount of time for this presentation about the updates to Google Maps. I was able to distill that information from my notes app into a two to three sentence summary. Also using the writing tools to organize your notes is a massive time saver as well. I have two wireless charging pads on my desk alone. So my iPhone 16 Pro Max is rarely dead, but the battery life is solid and can last you a full day. The iPhone 16 Pro Max impresses with its sleek design, powerful camera system, and innovative AI features. 
The natural titanium finish and larger 6.9 inch XDR Retina display offers both aesthetic appeal and functional improvements. The camera system, particularly the 48 megapixel Fusion main camera and the new 5X telephoto optical zoom lens delivers excellent image quality and versatility. The introduction of Apple Intelligence brings useful features like an improved Siri interaction, AI powered photo editing, and efficient note taking. While there are some minor usability concerns I had, overall the iPhone 16 Pro Max is still a top two I almost dropped that. It's still a top tier phone, if not the best phone still. And to be honest, it's a lot more fun to use now that I have some of the Apple intelligence features. Now this makes it a compelling choice for those seeking a premium mobile experience, offering amazing camera functionality with more Apple intelligence features as we get closer to next year. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. It helps out with the algorithm. Comment down below your thoughts on the new 16 Pro, 16 Pro Max, the new iPhones for 2024, along with Apple intelligence. Like, are you impressed with it or no? As always, have a blessed rest of your week. I'll see you all soon. Peace.